Hello everyone. Cyclops Level Builder 103 has just been released and I'm going to do a run through of uh, the latest features that have been added in this release. There have also been a bunch of bug fixes. Uh, I'm not going to go through those, but if you'd like more details, uh, the documentation now has a change log so you can read through that and get a better idea on just what has changed since the last release. Alright, on to the features. The Material Manager has had a big overhaul. Uh, now, instead of uh, dragging materials from the file systems into the editor, as soon as you create a new material, uh, this panel is going to automatically update to have your new material in it. So if I click on Materials and right-click and go to Create New and Resource, and we create a new standard Material 3D, and let's pick the default name, you'll see that as soon as that gets created, it's going to appear in our uh, tab below over here. Now, uh, there's, this is going to show all the materials in your entire project, but uh, that can be a bit overwhelming. So there are ways to cut down on the number of materials that uh, you are seeing in the panel here. One way is to type in the name of the material in the filter section. So if we just wanted to see the dirt materials, we could just type in the word dirt, and that is going to narrow it down to just the materials that have the words dirt in their name. Okay, and get rid of that. Uh, the other way is by using this side panel. Now, uh, this is sort of an imitation of our entire directory structure, the same as we see in the file system for uh, listing all the resources in our project. And these eyeballs allow you to uh, hide or show whatever materials are in the subdirectories. Now, by default, the entire directory structure is shown, and only a couple of our directories actually have materials in them. So if you only want to show the materials, only show the directories that have materials, just click on Show Unused, and that is going to hide all the directories that don't have any materials in them. And this can make it a lot easier to hide the directories that you're not interested in. A convenience feature that's been added to the Material Manager is the way to create materials by dragging and dropping texture files from the file system into this little uh, layout panel here. So for example, if we want to create a new material out of this uh, stone head, we can click and drag that into tiles uh, to create a new material in the tiles folder. And that brings up this little uh, dialog here. Uh, the top section allows us to check which type of material we want to create. Uh, we can create a standard material 3D or we can choose a custom shader material. Uh, let's stick with standard for now. And down here in the UV section, you can either choose the default one by one UVs that uh, you would get by creating regular standard material 3D, or if you scale to pixel size, what this is going to do is it's going to use a uh, pixel size of 32 units to scale the picture that you uh, dragged into the world. Now, this is a good way to keep uh, pixel sizes consistent across lots of images. So in a project, you might have images at lots of different pixel sizes. You might have a uh, one image that's 32 by 32. You might have another that's 64 by 64. You might have a long, narrow image that is uh, 16 by 128. And normally, uh, especially when you're doing a, sort of a pixel layout uh, for textures, you want the layout, you want the UVs to reflect the pixel sizes, not just be uniformly one by one everywhere. So uh, because this is a 32 by 32 uh, pixel image, this is still going to come out to one to one. But if we were using different sizes, this is going to automatically set the UVs so that we have a consistent pixel size across images, no matter what their source sizes are. So anyway, this is all set up and this is the name of the material that we're going to create. Click OK. And you can see we've already had our new material added down there. And if we scroll down here in the file system, you can see where it got added into uh, that directory as well. And if we uh, scroll through the properties over here, you can see it's all set up to use the texture that we dragged in as well. The primitive tools have had some options added. In other words, the block, the prism, the cylinder, and the stairs now have an option down here for match active block. Now, normally when you select a primitive tool and you start blocking stuff in, it's going to be on the ground plane if you're drawing an empty space like this. 
but uh, you don't necessarily want your block to be on the ground plane. Uh, if you're working on the second floor up here, you want those blocks to be higher up. So let's uh, select the block two. Let's turn on match active block. And now when we draw in new blocks, you can see they're going to be flush with the block that happens to be selected. And this can make it a lot easier to draw in extra floors and hallways and things like that. Uh, you will also notice we have a collision type, collision layers, and collision mask. Uh, this corresponds to those fields in uh, the Cyclops block object itself. So right now, uh, you can see when we created these new blocks, we created them with a static collision type. If we want a different collision type, let's say we want to create uh, a rigid collision. And let's say we want to change the collision layer to 2 and the collision mask to 3. And now if we draw in a block and we select it, um, you can see that that now has a rigid collision type and the layers and the masks uh, match what we've set in the tool settings down here. A new menu command has been added that makes it a lot easier to convert a uh, Cyclops project into regular Godot objects. I can see right now this scene has a whole bunch of Cyclops blocks in them, and maybe you'd rather be working with uh, regular mesh objects and collision objects. So what you can do is come up here to menu, Export as Godot Scene, and uh, type in the path of the new resource you want. You can also click the Browse button to go into whichever directory you want, and uh, type in the name you want. Press OK, and press OK again. And this will create a new scene that contains not only the uh, Godot objects that, well, whatever's in the scene that's not a Godot object, like this stuff up here, but also converts all these blocks into regular Godot objects. So if we come down here to the file system, uh, open up scenes, there's our new scene we just exported. If we double click on that, we can now see there is our very same scene, but now all those uh, Cyclops objects have been replaced with mesh instances and collision bodies. The command has been added to the menu for merging vertices together, which can make it easier to make pyramids and cones and shapes like that. Uh, so we have a block selected here. If we go into vertex mode, and then we select the vertices on top, so select a vertex first, then box select the rest. We can go to menu, uh, merge vertices to center, and now we have a nice little pyramid there. Uh, this will also work with cylinders, so let's pick our cylinder, create a simple cylinder here, uh, select the block, go into vertex mode, select the vertices on top, and merge those at center, and there's our pyramid. The materials brush has also been updated. First of all, it has a new icon up here. It has a little M next to the paintbrush. Now, if we click on that and we click on one of the materials in the material manager, we can now paint with that. So for example, if we want to paint with this yellow bricks, we can just click on that and click and drag in the scene to paint with that material. Uh, if you don't want to use this, if instead you want to sample from an actual material in the scene, Hover your mouse over the material you want to sample from and press Shift X to load that into the brush. And now we can paint with that material. Or if we want to paint with the grass material, hover the mouse over the grassy area, press Shift X, and we can now paint grass. Uh, when the Shift X is going to pay attention to which of these paint options you have selected. Uh, if this is selected, it will copy the uh, most over material into memory, uh, the face color, or the, I'm going to get a bit more into this a bit later, uh, the visibility of that particular face, and new is the paint UVs. So if we want to uh, set the UVs, or if we want to match the UVs on a several blocks at once, 
and let's zoom in here, you might notice that uh, this particular block has its UVs out of alignment with all these other blocks. Well, what we can do is hover over the block that we want and press Shift X to copy the UVs uh, into the block memory. And now when we paint, uh, the UVs of this block are going to be copied to this block. And uh, that's a good way to make a several different blocks with different UVs all aligned. One of the biggest changes in Cyclops Level Builder 103 is the addition of face vertex information uh, to the blocks, which allows us to do things like store color and normal information per vertex rather than per face. And one of the things that lets us do is create a new uh, vertex color brush. And uh, when this is selected, you can select a color, select a brush radius and a strength, and then just click and drag on your model start laying down vertex colors. And if you want to change to a different color, you can click on the color swatch, maybe change that to blue, put down some blue over here, and maybe try an orange. And if you want to sample a color you've already laid down, just uh, hover the mouse close to where you, uh, close to the vertex that you want to sample from, and press Shift X, and that's going to copy that color into the color swatch down here. And if you want this vertex color, just press, just hover the mouse close to the vertex and press Shift X again, and it will copy in the color. Uh, you can change the radius of the brush by typing a new number down here to get a bigger cursor if you want. And uh, you can change the strength, which changes how quickly these colors blend into the uh, mesh. So if you put that on point 0.1, that is going to be a lot slower. And now you'll get a much softer fade as you blend that in. Uh, if you want to paint on just a single face, you can also use the masking. So right now the component type is set to none. If you want to uh, only mask per face, we can set that to face. Uh, let's come over here to et, uh, face select mode. Let's select the face we want to edit. Let's say that one. Come back over here. And now when we paint vertices, uh, let's pick uh, a yellow. Now uh, we're only going to affect the face that we selected in um, in uh, face select mode. So that's a way that you can uh, take advantage of face vertices and only only uh, paint the vertex on a particular face rather than on all faces that connect to that vertex. And that's what's new in Cyclops Level Builder 103. Uh, please check it out. There is a bunch of bug fixes and stability improvements in addition to all the new stuff and uh, happy level building. Thanks for watching.